right outside of Chicago where the Great Western Trail and the Illinois Prairie Path meet. Voted 8th best place to live and 28th best place to raise a family. A town that knows how to have fun. Your secret gem of the western suburbs. Welcome to Villa Park. This is Now You Know with your host, Leslie Allison C.I. Allison CI, and you are viewing the very first episode of Now You Know. Thank you for uh, tuning in, and uh, today's guest is Matt Kassane. He is a longtime resident of Willow Park um, and a bit of a uh, local celebrity here in our midst. So uh, we're going to have a good time. Sit back, grab a box of a bag of popcorn, and uh, let's let's kick this off. So, Matt, uh, I understand that you began your career uh, at uh, the University of Maryland uh, when you were uh, intern at NBC Nightly News with uh, Tom Brokaw. That is correct. I worked for Tom Brokaw at NBC Nightly News. Now Tom's working. Uh, he, he retired from NBC, by the way, after 50 years. God bless him. He just retired last year. And now the only uh, time he gets behind the microphone, Leslie, is at the local bingo hall in Yankton, uh, South Dakota, where he's from. He grew up in he's from South Dakota. And you can go in, and any Sunday, any Sunday night, Tom will be calling bingo. All right, the next number is N. N is in Nicaragua, N18. All right, our next ball is G. G is in Goluli, G57. All right, our next number is B. B is in Beirut, B6. So he gets the little news kind of things in there. So uh, yeah, Tom was a great guy and uh, he gave me a career, man, basically. And I also have to give credit to his, um, his assistant, Adrian. Adrian Wheeler, if you're out there, Hello. Thank you for the career, by the way. She's the one that actually hired me to work for Tom. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that was that was an amazing, uh, amazing thing for a 19-year-old kid from Lombard, Illinois. You know, class of uh, Montini, class of 1983. Two years later, I'm working at NBC Nightly News in the same building as David Letterman. Saturday Night Live, Eddie Murphy, Martin Short, Jim Belushi, all those guys. I'd see him going up and down on the elevators at uh, 30 Rock in, uh, in New York City. It was quite an eye-opening experience. I can only imagine. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So is that when you decided that I could make a career doing this? I'm yes. as funny as these guys? Yes, I was 19 years old and I was just like, I'm ready. I'm ready to begin my career. And uh, man, did I slip and fall a lot. <laughs> Boy, did I make some huge mistakes along the way. Well, I understand that you wound up at uh, Second City. Yes, that's right. That's right. I wound up at Chris. I wound up. I wound up taking classes at Second City at the same time that Chris Farley was actually an actor on the main stage there. And we'd go and you know, and we'd watch Chris uh, perform. And um, one night, I went in there. And they were doing um, previews for their next their next upcoming show. And I walk in and uh, I and I see this on stage. There's a guy on stage and he's doing. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Matt Foley and I am a motivational speaker. Now before I get going with my speech called Go for it. I want to give everybody here a little bit of a scenario of what my life's all about. First off, I am 35 years old. I am Christ divorced. And for the past six months, I have been living in a van down by the river. I saw Chris do that, Matt Foley. <laughs> in front of like 30 people, Leslie. Um, Chris wasn't famous, that skit had never been done before, so as I sat there, like as close as we are right now to the cameras, 
I sat there in amazement watching Chris Farley do his world famous, you know, motivational speaker routine, you know? And I'm, there's like nobody in the audience. I'm like the only one laughing at it. Everybody else is like, this guy is nuts, you know? And I'm like, this is the funniest thing I have ever seen. And um, so yeah, it was just like, I've had this wild career, you know? Um, just one, you know, I, 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 I get to work with, I got to work with some of my um, childhood heroes when I was a, <clears throat> When I was a younger guy in my 20s, after college and everything, um, I ran into my buddy uh, at, at a cheap trick concert, my, my good friend John Gabriziak, John G. And uh, Johnny, how you doing, buddy? And um, he was uh, friends with the guys in Cheap Trick, and we became friends. And next thing I know, a couple years later, I'm at Rick Nielsen's birthday, the guitar player for Cheap Trick. I'm at Rick Nielsen's birthday party at his house in Rockford, hanging out with these guys, telling Rick Nielsen dirty jokes. <laughs> I've had this crazy ass career, man. It's just been amazing. But thank you so much for having me on your show. Oh, well, we're thrilled to have yeah, you here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it really is exciting. I understand that you've worked with people like Weird Al Yankovic. Yeah, that was uh, Weird Al's opening act for a few of his shows on his Running with, Sir Running with Scissors tour back in 2000. And, um, you know, the first time you ever get to open for a major national touring act like that, you're just, it doesn't matter how many comedy clubs you've played over the past decade or so, you're never really ready for it. And so I brought like my whole family, my wife was there for the first show. It was in Rockford again, in the, at, the Metro, at the Metro Center in front of like 10,000 people. And I get out there and I'm like, hey, how's everybody doing? You know? And there's this guy in the balcony the whole time I'm on stage. You suck! Oh. The whole time I'm on stage. And finally I just was like, you know what, buddy, you suck. And I gave him the finger and everything. So. <laughs> it got better as time went on. See, Leslie, I got funnier. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I understand that you even performed at a local place around here. We may have rubbed shoulders. My, my uh, comedy career only lasted two gigs, but that was at Who's On First. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> you you played there? I did. Oh no, when? When were you there? Oh, a long, long time ago. I think you might have still been in high school. A long, long, long time ago. <laughs> oh wow, yeah, Who's On First. Yeah, I played at Who's On First a bunch, and uh, it's now Starbucks. <laughs> And uh, still next, you know, right next to where Max Golden Pheasant is still there, and I uh, still go in there. You know, the cool thing about Max Golden Pheasant on, 50, on 83 North Avenue is the owner, um, we just call him Mac, you know, he's the bartender there. He's this kind of like uh, hippie looking dude. He's been working there since like the 70s, and so like he, that's a very famous place for rock bands to go into. As a matter of fact, the last, the last place, unfortunately, God bless him, God rest in peace, um, so the the uh, lead singer for Stone Temple Pilots, Scott Weiland, the last place that he was seen alive was in Max Golden Pheasant in 2016. There's a picture on the internet. You can look it up. It's real. Yeah. And uh, But anyway, I, I still love going in there and listening to uh, Max's stories. He's, <coughs> he's had all these bands going there over the years. <coughs> Everybody from Ario Speedwagon to the Stone Temple Pilots, the Led Zeppelin, Robert Plant used to go in there when, when Zeppelin was touring through the Midwest. And yeah, it's a really awesome place. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that's oh yeah. Amazing. Well, we are so thrilled that you are our very first guest on this new show. Uh, the Bill Park Cable Commission, we're bringing that back. I understand you were on the Cable Commission at one point. Yes, that is correct, um, I was. With, with uh, Sid Bird. Sid, God rest him. Uh, what a sweet man. Sid was uh, an, an older gentleman in his 90s, and he was uh, a World War II veteran and, and part of the VFW Hall. And um, everybody in town knew Sid. And um, he asked me one time if I would co-host the 4th of July um, parade in Villa Park with him back in 2019. And it's still up on the internet. The video is still up on the internet. And uh, it's just really cool to see um, to, to see good old Sid in that video because he was so full of life. And, you know, everybody loved loved uh, good old Sid, man. We really, we really miss him a lot. Yeah. Oh, that's terrific. We'd like to dedicate, I think, this episode, this very first episode, this very first episode will be dedicated in honor of Sid's memory. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's great, man. Yeah. You would love that. Well, cool. Uh, so you can find us on Comcast uh, uh, Cable Channel 9 and AT&T U 
members, 99. We are hoping that this will become a regular program. You got to let us know what you think, and uh, we're definitely looking for more ideas all the time as far as what you want to know. That's the name of the show. Now you know, and so it's my job to go out and find the answer to those stories. So feel free. We're not done with math, though. We got a long way to go. So. All right. <laughs> and I know you've been a resident of Villa Park for how many years now? 22 years. I managed to squeak out a uh, mortgage payment every month for 22 years. So That's... I'm not sure how I've done that. <laughs> and uh, one of our questions, when you consented to doing this interview today, we asked you to uh, okay. choose one of your favorite, one of your favorite hangouts in Villa Park oh, yeah. to conduct this interview. Right. Oh, yeah. And you chose Crazy Poor at 105. East North Avenue, I believe that is, right? Yeah, exactly. Why did you choose Crazy Core? What do you like on the menu? Well, Crazy Core is just a, a fun place to go. Um, I've never found any hair in my food here. Um, <laughs> the staff is really friendly. I asked them for a cough drop, and they went in the back. They got me a cough drop because I had a little tickle in my throat today. It wasn't hurry? It wasn't. No, it was, uh, it was a good cough drop. Uh, so the uh, and then they have like some really amazing food uh, that's prepared by uh, Enzo's uh, pizza that is part of uh, part of the uh, restaurant. Here. Enzo's, uh, and then uh, you can you know order pizza if you just want to get pizza from Enzo's. You know, you know. so they have this really cool uh, pizza. Did, should we are we telling people about that? Is it coming out while we're well, you you had a special request, yes. so um, yeah, you're getting do, your special. Do you want to do you want to wait until it comes out yeah, before it comes out? Wait. Okay, I think we should cool. keep them in suspense. So you can see we have the pizza platter right here. You can see that <laughs> we're waiting for the we're waiting for the pizza. So okay, while we're waiting on the pizza, yeah, let's keep talking about your career a little bit. Okay, tell us some of your favorite gigs. Oh man, I've had a lot of lot of uh, fun, interesting gigs. Um, like I said, open up for Weird Al. And being able to do uh, music videos with some of my my childhood heroes like Cheap Trick, and then I worked with uh, another band that I absolutely adore. Maybe my second favorite band. Um, Enough's enough. Uh, you guys all remember Chips enough. He was um, part of the Man Cow uh, morning radio show for years. Yeah, <clears throat> so Chip um, and I became friends and I wound up doing some music videos for Enough's Enough back in the 90s. And I've had this really wild career, just you know, kind of like all over the place, comedy and video production. And um, I've, uh, I've done like uh, other types of entertainment as well, uh, I'm a DJ. So I actually DJ the uh, Little Park 4th of July celebration in 2019. Sid was there at that. And uh, he was dancing with Janet. He was Remember when Sid was dancing with you, Janet? At the, at the 4th of July parade? Yeah, and I was the DJ, remember that? Yeah, Sid, get out there. She was supposed to dance with everybody. And she does, she does. <laughs> that is true. I have I have pictures of Janet dancing at German Fest at Sacred Heart. Oh, yeah. With some guy she didn't even... Some guy she didn't even... about you. Some guy you didn't even know. That's awesome. Um, That's awesome. But, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, uh, yeah, Tom Brokaw was the first big thing that I did. Um, what else What else did I do? I forgot. Who else did I do? Oh, Chicago Med. I was on Chicago Med. Yeah. yeah. They still owe me money. <laughs> well, we'll see if we can fix that for you. Yeah. They still owe me money. Pay no, I'm just kidding. They, I know. No, they paid me. They paid me. Last week, I got a Chicago Med check for $1.68. So it's the, it's the gig that keeps on giving. Was that during COVID? Was that filmed during COVID? No, we filmed before COVID. We filmed in 2017. Yeah. I haven't worked since. I am blessed. Okay. Thank you, God. Right <laughs> along. Um, I have a feeling I know the answer to this question, but who is your favorite comedian and why? Oh man, it's it's too hard to narrow it down to just one favorite comedian. Um, I've had so many influences over the years. Um, when I was a younger guy, uh, Steve Martin was always my my favorite guy. I bought all his albums. And never got to see him perform, but I would have loved to see Steve do his wild and crazy guy routine. You know, that would have been so cool. Um, Andy Kaufman is another guy that I just adore. 
<clears throat> and um, I actually do a little bit of a tribute to Andy. I do uh, sort of a, a, a takeoff of one of his famous characters by the name of Tony Clifton. I do a character named Johnny Chicago, which is heavily influenced by by Tony Clifton. There might be a video somewhere of me doing Johnny Chicago on YouTube. I don't know. You guys might you can track it down. You might, you might want to look, look that up. Johnny Chicago. Uh, other comedians that I've loved over the years, Jerry Seinfeld. I saw Jerry at a comedy club before he became a huge superstar. Um, and uh, of course, you know, Dave Letterman was always another guy that I... Uh, that I, I love and uh, I take on his mannerisms and I don't even know it. Sometimes people will say, you're acting like Dave again. And I'll just be like, really, Michael Keaton? You know, that's another guy that I'll, I'll act like, I'll act like Michael Keaton and not even realize him in that mode. I'll just be sitting there like, yeah, man, that's yeah, Michael Keaton. He's, like, he's doing his thing. He's like, ah, Jeff, I got all these ideas. I couldn't find out. Yeah, I can't find out. No, so I kind of morph into people. It's kind of morph into people. I'll start doing impersonations. Um, you know, when I really start getting into it, uh, Tony Soprano was another guy that I sort of just watched The Sopranos so much, you know. I started picking up Tony, um, Tony Soprano's mannerisms, you know. Oh, can you do an impression for I had, a, I had an audition for a play. They wanted me to be in Shakespeare, you know. <clears throat> they wanted me to do a Shakespeare play. And I was just like, I don't know how to do Shakespeare. I'm a comedian. I'm not a theatrically, theatrically trained professional, you know, actor. And so um, I just went out and auditioned, and uh, I got up there. <clears throat> Hold on a sec. Hold on. Oh man, that's just like if this doesn't work, you guys can grab. There's a, there's a couple clips of me doing Tony Soprano on the internet doing Shakespeare, but uh, oh, to be or not to be, that's the frickin' question. Silvio, what should I do? Well, uh, I don't know, Pete, but uh, a lot of the guys, they're not too, way to, they're not too happy to get things have been going lately. Oh, at two, Sil, at two. Did you watch the spring? Oh, yeah. Okay. You know, it's weird doing impressions for people of, of I do an you know, I've done impersonations for people, and then afterwards they'll go, you know what I'm doing, right? And they'll be like, no. And then I'll just be like, oh, I just wasted my time doing that. <laughs> Or, or I'll, I'll get, I'll, I'll be, in, I'll be at a club or something like that, doing a gig, and I'll be like, um, how many of you guys, we have any uh, Sopranos fans here? And like, you know, there'll be 200 people, maybe eight people will applaud, and I'll be like, oh, that's good, eight people will enjoy this impersonation. So that's, this is going to be a great show. <sighs> so, Bobby Flay, Bobby Flay is another guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. That's another guy. I went out to New York and did some cooking uh, stuff with Bobby Flay. And that was cool, yeah. He was, um, I don't know if he was, I don't know if he was crabby that week, but, I mean, he was okay, but it was just like, you know, I, I thought there were a few times where I actually thought, because he's sort of a tough guy, yeah. you know, he grew up in like a tough part of New York, you know, and uh, I don't know if you know Bobby's background, but like he dropped out of high school and stuff, and he's a tough, he was a tough guy, so, I mean, there were a few times during the shoot where I actually thought Bobby might punch me. Really? Yeah. Why? I don't know. I don't know. You know how I got the part? You know, you know how they hired me? So my wife, abs my wife Maria, absolutely adored Bobby Flay. I mean, she loved watching the Food Network. She used to get the Food Network magazines and all that. And so we were, um, I, I saw this thing on Craigslist. Learn how to cook with Bobby Flay. Are you a terrible cook? Fly out to New York and let Bobby Flay. And then, it, and then they gave you a link to, you know, to audition for it. You had to do, make a video and send it in and all this stuff. So I sent this video in. And um, my wife held the camera for me. And so I'm like, got cameras. You know, and like, we hit play. And I'm like, oh, here's my little audition on, in, my, in our kitchen. And I'm like, Bobby, everybody says that I look like a fat version of you. Oh. Okay. And uh, because Maria's family, they're always saying, Uncle Matt looks like Bobby Flay. But I'm like, you know, he's like really skinny guy. And I'm like a heavy set fellow. Big bone. Big bone. I'm Husky. Yes. <laughs> Remember Huskies? Remember Huskies at, at Sears? Have you ever oh, sure? yeah. 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 The jeans. Yeah, the Husky jeans. They, they would have, they would have the, uh, they would have this like uh, kind of sandpaper in the knees, you know. That's right. Yes, yes. Huskies. Oh my gosh, wow. So, um, as long as we're talking about comedians. Oh boy. Maybe comedians gone wild a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the Oscars, the recent Oscars. Oh yeah. 
did you see um, what went down between Will Smith and uh, I did. Rock? It just happened last night. I know the show's not going to air probably for maybe another week or so, but we just watched the Oscars last night, and I actually saw that go live, you know? And so, like everybody else in America, we were always, we were all like a little bit confused. Like, was that real? Was that staged? Oh, yeah, I got it on my phone, and I was like trying is to it a, all the different Is angles. it a skit? You know, because the Oscars for the past couple of years have been like failing miserably along with the Olympics ratings wise. You know, like people have just not been tuning in like they used to. You know, over COVID, they didn't even have the Oscars. And so, like, the ratings have really been going down. So, if anything, this elevated interest. Now, people are all going to be watching those videos. And maybe, maybe, but whether or not it was planned or not, maybe it's enhancing the, the interest in the Oscars. I'm not sure. So. But um, yeah, I, I thought it was, I really thought for a second, like, that's, that's, that's a joke, right? That's a joke? I'm not sure, but I was just like watching it. Because I think, I, you know, I think if you were to put Will Smith and Chris Rock in like a boxing match together, my money would be on Will. My money would be like, yeah, he's going to kill him. Because Chris is a, kind of a skinny dude, you know? And, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I didn't know what to think. I was just like, holy crap, that, that looked real. It looked, I think he really hit him. You know, but I didn't realize he. I think he slapped him. I don't think he punched him. Because I think, I think, I think if Bill would have punched him, he definitely would have gone down. Yeah. 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 Well, and there was no blood. I mean, yeah. I was right. Blood. He was shook up a little bit. He's just like. Yeah. But he held it together. I used to be able to do a pretty good impersonation at Chris Rock. I'm not sure if it's any good anymore. So, uh, Kev, get ready to edit this out. If this sucks. It just sucks. I'm not sure if this is going to be any good or not, so I'll try it. I, I, can't do a, I can't do Chris Rock from last night, but he used to do this one bit about chopping balls. <laughs> you know, there's two different types of shopping balls in America. There's the, there's the malls where the white people shop, and then there's the malls where the white people used to shop. <laughs> and those malls have two stores. Sneakers and baby clothes. <laughs> I'm not sure if that was any good or not. Was that any good? Would you, yeah. Did you know how I was doing? Yeah. Did that just sound like one of the Cosby, like the Fat Albert kids or something? Yeah. I'm not even sure that's any good. So, moving right along, <laughs> uh, um, there was some more excitement. Hang on a second. Hey, where's the pizza? All right, go ahead. In case you're just tuning in, we are here with Matt Kassane over at Crazy Core in Villa Park uh, in the middle of our first episode of Now You Know. And Janet's and, back here. And, and, and Aida. And, <laughs> Janet and Aida. We have super fans. We have Hey, fans. don't don't think we're I know they look they look nice and wholesome, but don't let them fool you. If you yeah, if you knew these two like I did, trust me. If you see them when you're out, you got you got a party for these two right here. It's they're all about trouble. Okay. <laughs> I know they look like they're going to play canasta, but trust me, they're not. You don't you don't even want to know. So um, yeah, talk about uh, other bad girls. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Regina Hall last night. Oh yeah. Yeah. At the Oscars. <laughs> Yeah, that was something what, else. What do you think about that? I mean, how do you feel about that? About men becoming sexual objects? Well, you know, I don't have a problem with it, Leslie. <laughs> yeah. If I if I were to if I were to be if I were to pick uh, you know, like if you gave me a handful of female celebrities to frisk me down, Regina or Amy Schumer would probably be up there in the right top. On the list. Right on there, yeah. <laughs> I wish I could say that we had one of them here to I do know. the COVID test today, but oh man, I don't yeah, know. that was that was a weird show last night. Man. That was a little strange. Yeah, that was out there. But, you know, it was it was entertaining. I know, right? I know. Exactly. All right, so now we go. Let's go back into the G rated portion of the show. The G rated, okay. Yes. You are a um, single father yep. of a teenage. She's a tween. She's a tween. She is a tween, yeah. My daughter, Eugenia, she's 12 years old. And, uh, yeah, you know, like, she'll be like, Dad, can you take me to the mall? And I'll be like, sure, honey, I'd be happy to. <clears throat> what stores do you want to go to? I'm not sure, but I don't want you to come with. <laughs> 
I'm like, well, what do you want? She goes, well, just drop me off and then give me some money. <laughs> and she, she's been like that since she was a little kid. When she was like five years old, she comes over, Dad, yeah, can I have some money? It's like, sorry, sorry honey, I didn't get any cash today. Ah, oh, well, why don't you go to the dollar store? Why should I go there? To get some dollars. <laughs> What else did she say to me? Oh, it's cracking me up. Oh, yeah, she, when she was little, she comes over and she brings me this little stuffed toy. She goes, Daddy, look what I got you. I go, what? She goes, it's a stuffed animal. It's a little puppy. I'm like, oh, that's so cute. I go, can you go put that on Daddy's desk so I don't lose it? She goes, I'll just keep it in my room. <laughs> Very thoughtful. Yeah, there was another one, too, I had. What is it? Oh, it'll come back to me. Right? So, but yeah, she, she's a trip. Eugenia's awesome. Hi, Eugenia. Hi. So, she's almost getting to that age. She's there. She is to that age. She's there. So, she's um, making my life a living oh, hell. That's what I was going to ask. <laughs> so, how do you deal with would be suitors? <laughs> well, I don't know yet. Um, I don't want to say anything about that because then she might get really mad at me if I put that out there. But let's just say I have invested in a shotgun. And I'm looking at you, buddy. I'm watching you. Whoever that is, whoever I'm, whoever, yeah. Poor kid. Eugenia will never have a date now. <laughs> I'm going to. Yeah, she's going to watch this and, oh my God. <laughs> my dad used to come out in his underwear. He would answer the door in his underwear. I love it. <laughs> in his underwear. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh my God. Depending on how they acted here, yeah. Oh my God. That's hilarious, man. That's really funny. So... <laughs> So if Eugenie came to you and said she wanted to be a comedian, yeah. how would you feel about that? So give it a shot. You know, yeah, try it, man. You know, maybe she'll be better than me. I hope. God. Oh, you're wonderful. You're oh, wonderful. Ah, oh, stop. <laughs> maybe a little bit more of that would be nice. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Bring it on. So... I was looking at some of your videos that you have out there. Um, Sorry about that. No. <laughs> you like to you like to do videos. You like to walk your dog. Yes, Marnie. 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 Uh, hi, Marnie. Hi, Marnie. Um, <laughs> she should be watching this. <laughs> yeah, right. There you go. And um, I noticed one in particular. You were over by Ovaltine, and yes. you started. Talking about an emblem on the side of the building. Mm -hmm. This could be the uh, for another episode. This could be for another episode of Now You Know. We oh, might yeah. have to get to the bottom of this. Oh, but yeah. you want to tell us what what your thoughts are about what that emblem stands for? Well, let me preface this a little bit by saying I've had a long illustrious history with the Ovaltine factory in Villa Park. My friend Joe, when we were in high school, his mom was the secretary there to the CEO of, of Ovaltine. So occasionally when we were in high school, Joe would get the family car and then we'd go pick up his mom, Dolores, at the at the uh, Ovaltine factory and she would say, come on in, and she would load us up with all these really cool new products that weren't even on the shelf yet, like candy bars, they had Ovaltine candy bars. And, um, do you remember Poppycock? Do. So poppycock was like the popcorn. It was like fiddle faddle, but it was like way, way better. It was like so good. Oh my god! I don't even know if they do. They still make it? Do they still make that stuff? I think they do. Oh my god! And this is before, like, I mean, maybe Garrett's popcorn was around, but I mean, this is like really good stuff. Anyway, so um, yeah, so uh, you know, and then if you grew up in Villa Park or Elmhurst or Lombard, even like you know, at certain times during the day. Um, <clears throat> when they were actually manufacturing the Ovaltine, you could smell it, you know, coming out of the smokestacks. It was, the whole town would smell like Ovaltine and chocolate. It was beautiful. It was so nice. But no, there's there's some kind of an emblem, and I don't know if it had anything to do with witchcraft, but it was like some kind of an emblem on the side of the building for Ovaltine. 
And I thought that I had heard over the years that there may have been a little bit of that, I don't want to even say witchcraft, but maybe a little bit of like hocus pocus or a little bit of like, um, uh, I'm not sure exactly, but uh, you know, to like, to try to, yeah, like a little bit, little bit of magic to try to like, you know, make, you know, be prosperous or something. I don't remember what, what it was. I forgot what it was, but it was something like that. And then I also want to, also remember uh, in that video that you're talking about when I was talking about the old tea factory in Villa Park um, we should start doing rock concerts and set the bands up on the oval team roof you know and there's a there's a there's a really high part of the roof um, on the old factory part where they have would be perfect for like a drum riser yeah, they could do concerts and like it would be over you know like Can you the, spot, the whole town yeah you could do like a concert I don't know. I've always thought that would be a cool idea. You know, yeah. we can look into that. We can definitely look into that. <laughs> I get Weird Al out there or something. Uh, yeah, right? So, um, any last thoughts before we wrap up? Yeah, where's the pizza? <laughs> um, any last thoughts? Well, Leslie, uh, congratulations on your new show. Thank you very much. I'm very happy that you had me on as your uh, your first guest. I feel honored. Um, and uh, you and Kevin Patrick, uh, Kevin's an old friend, are going to have great success. I can tell right now. You guys are going to have. Yeah, you guys are going to do. You guys are going to do very well. And um, yeah, just keep up the good work. And you know, maybe uh, sometime down the road, have me back on again, and we'll we'll talk uh, about more stuff. And I just came up with a great idea. Yes. You know how, like, when you were a kid and you play a game and it was tag, you're it? Yes. I think you get to pick my next guest. Who should I interview next in Villa Park? Oh, man. No, that's... Give me a good one. If, if you could get them, I mean, you know, I, again, I'm just like a local guy, but there is, an, there is another guy that had, be, you know, is it... Is in, national or international internationally known rock star that I still think lives in the area who I know grew up in Villa Park. I think Kevin knows him. The guy Tom Tom Higginson from the Plain White Tees. Oh, wow. So and okay. I and I think his grandma's around here. Gotta get Tom I know on man. You got it but you gotta have him bring his guitar and do his song man. You gotta have him do Delilah. If, I mean, do that. But there's so there's so many great people in town here. I mean you got like so many to choose from and you know, um, uh, different uh, you know people that business owners and restaurant owners. And we got a lot of history. Yeah. Too. Oh yeah. And that I understand. We lost some of that. When we lost Sid. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Sweet man. He was just a treasure trove. He was a great guy. Uh, we miss him. Information about Bill Park and uh, about some of that history. So hopefully oh, yeah. we can resurrect some of these awesome stories. Uh, get some of these fascinating people in Villa Park. We have so much to share. And uh, I look forward to hearing your stories and hearing your suggestions for additional shows. And again, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Leslie. So much. You're welcome. Thank you so much. All right. Here it comes. Enzo. Yeah. Thank you, Enzo. Wow. Look at that beauty. Oh man, that looks wonderful, buddy. Thank you so much, man. What is this exactly? <laughs> this has got like. Hold on, let me let me let me uh, get this out. Okay, go ahead, man. Tell us a little right. bit about this pizza. So this is his favorite, I guess. Hold on. <laughs> oh, sure, sure. Tell um, us who you are. I'm Enzo, by the way. And you made this, right? Sure, yeah, I made that. Uh, <laughs> so no, if I if you like it, I made it. If you don't like it, oh, I didn't okay. make it. But I love it's, it. a, it's a combination of like a beef sandwich and a pizza all together and fries. Go ahead. So we got beef on the bottom. Hot peppers, sweet peppers, fries, and our delicious pizza. Great combo. You gotta try this it. Is yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Mm. And we have some drinks for you too with Amanda here. Thank you. Wash the pizza down with some. Uh, <laughs> so good. Delicious pizza. Thank you. Thank you. So good, buddy. Thank you so much. Enjoy that. Thanks for letting us do this, man. Awesome. Definitely. Thank you. Oh, nice. What do we have? What do we have here as far as cocktails go? So we've got a weekender for you here. This oh. is our famous cocktail. A weekender. A weekender. It's Malibu Coca Rum. Okay. Amaretto 
cordial, cranberry juice, lime juice, and pineapple juice. Okay. And then we have our mule. We got a standard, just kettle one base mule, so it's just very vodka based. But we try to do a little twist on some of ours where we actually do different flavor varieties. Okay. So the Mexican has a tequila in them. Oh, nice. Yeah. Mules. yeah. I like all the so, We try so a little bit. <laughs> Oh my god, that's so good. <laughs> that's delicious. Thank you. Thank you very much. You guys that is so delicious. Isn't it good? It is good. So, once again, you can find us. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't talk with my mouth full. But you can find us on Comcast Channel 6, as well as. AT&T Uverse Channel 99. Thank you once again. Have a great evening, everybody, and we'll see you again soon. Today's episode was sponsored by Crazy Poor Tavern and Enzo's Pizza, located at 105 East North Avenue in Villa Park. This episode has been dedicated to one of Villa Park's best, Charles Sid Bird. Make sure you tune into Comcast Channel 6 or AT&T Uverse 99 for new episodes of Now You Know with Leslie Allison C.I. Everybody, look, we got some delightful pizza.